Here we've got a nice problem from the 1939 Putnam exam. This is question A1. And speaking about 1939 for a little bit, that was in fact the year that I was born. So it's a little known fact that I'm a vampire. Okay, let's get into the problem. So we want to consider the graph of the elliptic curve y squared equals x cubed. So it does not say that it's an elliptic curve, but I'm sure that using this curve y squared equals x cubed is motivated by the problem writer being interested in elliptic curves. And then we want to find a point along that curve where the slope of the tangent is equal to 1, and then find the arc length from the origin to that point on the curve. So let's dive into the solution. So I'll start by parametrizing this curve, and I can do that as follows. So let's consider the parametrization r of t, which has vector parts t squared and t cubed. And so this clearly parametrizes the curve because t squared cubed is equal to t cubed squared, but you notice that's exactly the same thing as x cubed equals y squared, because this first entry is playing the role of x and the second entry is playing the role of y. But now we'd like to find dy by dx, which is the slope of the tangent line, but let's notice that by the theory of parametric curves, that's equal to dy by dt over dx by dt. So I won't go into how we prove that, but that's kind of a well-known result. Okay, so let's see, dy by dt, that's pretty easy, that's 3t squared, and dx by dt, that's just 2t. So in the end, we end with 3 over 2 times t. But now, since we want this slope to be equal to 1, we'll set this equal to 1, and we'll see that we get t equals 2 over 3. Okay, nice. So we've got our t value that in fact gives us this point on the parametric curve. And you might say, well, what's the x and the y coordinate here? Well, in fact, we don't actually need that to calculate this arc length, but it might be of interest. So notice the x coordinate will be two over three squared, so that's four by nine. And the y coordinate will be t over three cubed. So that's gonna be, let's see, eight, over 27. So that's that coordinate. But we'll just use the arc length formula for a parametric curve. And that looks like this. So it'll be the integral from zero to two thirds. So zero because we've decided to start at the origin, two thirds because that's the point where we have a slope of tangent line of one. And then we'll have the square root of dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared dt. So again, that's a fairly well-known formula for the arc length of a parametrically defined curve. Okay, so that's going to give us the integral from 0 to 2 thirds. Let's see, dx by dt squared, that's going to be 4t squared. So we have the square root of 4t squared plus dy by dt squared, that will be 9t to the fourth. Okay, so we'd probably like to factor a t squared out of this. That'll leave us with the integral from 0 to 2 two thirds t times our integral of four plus nine t squared dt. So something like that. But let's notice that we can do a u substitution on this because we have a function composed within another function whose derivative or close to its derivative is outside of that composition. So let's see, if we would take this 4 plus 9t squared and set this equal to maybe u, so I'll say u is 4 plus 9t squared, let's notice that du is equal to 18t dt. So if I were to solve for t times dt, then I would in fact get, let's see, 1 over 18 du. So that's going to give me 1 over 18 times the integral from 0 to, I'll think about this upper end point in just a second, 
But now we have the square root of u, which is u to the half du. So we're left with something that looks like this. But actually, I made a mistake here. This lower bound of integration should not be zero. It should be zero evaluated into this value of u. But notice that's going to give us nine or four plus nine times zero, which is four. Now let's see what we get. Four plus nine times two thirds squared. So let's see. That'll give us four plus... 4, which is 8. So now we've got the integral from 4 to 8. So something that looks like this. But now let's notice that this gives us 18. And then taking the antiderivative will give us a 3 over 2. And then u to the 3 halves evaluated at 8 and 4. So we'll have 8 to the 3 halves minus 4 to the 3 halves. And then from here, it's fairly standard arithmetic to end at the following expression. So I'll just jump to the end. 8 over 27 times the 2 times the square root of 2 minus 1. And that's a good place to stop.